Hello everyone, I am the author Alice Liddell, aka Lauren A.R. Masterson, and today we are reading from my novel, Freya's Baby Shattered. This is my fifth novel overall and my third romance novel. Now this novel is special because it's actually an alternate timeline to the original Freya's Baby. The difference is in this story, Freya loses the baby. She suffers a miscarriage and it's about her dealing with that grief and that loss and also with Alex suffering from that same grief and loss but also having to deal with how exactly they're going to be a family. So we're actually going to jump ahead to chapter 37 and this is where the story takes a dramatic turn from Freya's baby. So please enjoy. Chapter 37, Alex. I rub my eyes and check my phone. The illuminated screen read 2.45. I grumbled and untangled myself from Freya. My sock clad feet touching the... My socked feet touching the cold floor. I avoided the creaky step and went to the bathroom. When I came back upstairs, I heard Freya making noises. She looked troubled with her brow furrowed and her lip in a pout. Freya was still asleep, but she had realized I was gone. I stood at the bedside and watched her, curious. Alex? She muttered, moving her hand on my side of the bed. Where? Maybe this is what Grandma meant. Maybe Freya calls out for me in her sleep when I'm not here. Alex? Her voice grew louder, but it was a little higher than normal. Her lips trembled. I'm scared. My heart melted. I sat back on the bed and put my hand on her cheek. Here I am, I whispered. Immediately, Freya's face relaxed into a smile. Her lips were still retaining their pout, making them look soft. I laid down next to her. Freya sighed and wrapped herself around me again. I smiled. I guess it really was true that she really did love me all those years. It was odd to me that she was instantly comforted by my presence. Mmm... Freya murmured in her sleep. She had one of my arms in a death grip. I knew my arm was going to be numb when I woke up again. I tried to withdraw, but Freya was having none of it. I sighed and gave up. Freya's having her way with me. What else is new? I chuckled. That's what I liked about her. She didn't try to change herself or give in just to impress someone. She was always exactly herself. That morning, I checked my phone. Mom had texted that she would give us a ride to school since she was worried about Freya waiting in the cold at the bus stop. I got my things together and started to get dressed. I looked over at the bed and saw that Freya was still dead asleep. She is not going to be happy. I walked over and poked her. Freya, wake up. Freya swatted at my hand and buried herself under the covers. I tried again, shaking her a little. Freya, you have to get ready for school. No, she pouted and pulled the covers over her head. I pulled the covers off, making her yelp. Ah, cold! She tried to grab them back. Come on, we have to get going. I held the covers hostage to ensure she got up. Freya sat up and glared at me. Fine. She rolled out of bed and stumbled around the room, unsure of what to do first. She then grabbed a towel and went to shower. I grabbed my backpack and headed down to the kitchen. I dumped it on the floor and seated myself at the breakfast table. Mom was already sitting, sipping some tea and nibbling at toast and jam while reading a book. Grandma was singing an old country western song and wearing a cow wrangler getup while frying eggs. Better eat up, Tex! Grandma chirped as she dished up the eggs and placed them in front of me. You got a long cattle drive ahead. Thanks, Grandma. I tucked into my food. Mom looked up. Good morning, Alex. Morning, Mom. I said between mouthfuls. Grandma set a plate of toast and a glass of milk in front of me. Where's your gal? She's still getting ready. I continued on my breakfast. I got your text, Mom. Mom nodded. Oh, good. Well, I didn't have to be at work until this afternoon anyway. I want to make sure Freya doesn't relapse. Freya came into the kitchen. She was putting on a necklace as she came in. I looked up and dropped my fork. Freya looked like a snow bunny. She was wearing a cute white fleece beret with slingback pigtails. She was wearing a powder blue tank top that had little silver snowflakes embroidered on it with an off-the-shoulder white wool sweater. 
She had an ice blue pleated mini skirt with ice blue leggings underneath. She was wearing white boots with little puff balls on the ties. Freya had even done her makeup. She sat down at the table. Morning, everyone. Mom looked over Freya's ensemble. You look nice, sweetie. Oh, thanks, she smiled. I thought it would help me feel less gross. You still feel sick? Mom's face fell. Freya shrugged. Nah, I just feel all tired and crappy, you know? I set my plate aside. You sure you're okay enough to go to school? This'll put a pep in your step. Grandma set a plate of dry toast and a cup of coffee with the milk jug in front of Freya. Thank you. She poured a generous amount of milk into her coffee and stirred it. She turned to me. I'm fine. This'll help. Freya gestured with her coffee cup, then sipped it. I put my dishes in the sink. Well, if you're sure. Yeah, yeah. She crammed toast in her mouth. You don't need to rush, honey. Mom refilled her tea. Freya swallowed and drank some more coffee. What do you mean? The bus will be here soon. Mom handed Freya a napkin. I'm going to drive you to school. Barry can pick you up. We don't want you to stand out in the cold. It's okay. You don't have to do that. Freya picked at her second piece of toast. Mom batted her hand. Don't be silly. Your health is important. You'll have to stay with Alex at his practice anyway, since Barry doesn't get off until later. Freya nodded, nibbling a corner of the toast. I put my hands on Freya's shoulders and smiled at her. She tilted her head back. What? I chuckled. Nothing. I kissed the crown of her hair. Freya blushed and got up to put her dishes in the sink. I'll go get my coat. We met in the garage and piled into the car. Freya was wearing a cream fleece and suede coat she had gotten for Christmas the year before. I got in the back seat with her. I couldn't help but notice that when she leaned forward, the sweater slung down, revealing the tight tank top and the massive cleavage it gave her. I jerked my head up and pretended to look out the window as Mom got into the car. She looked behind her. All right, now remember, Dad will pick you up at the gym net entrance. We nodded, and Mom drove us to school. When we arrived, Mom turned around in the front seat again. Alex, please tell your father to get you kids some dinner somewhere after school. I have to work late, and I think it will be nice if the three of you spend some time together. Sounds good, Mom. I grabbed my backpack. Have a good day at work. Freya grabbed her bag and smiled. Yeah, thanks for the ride. See you later. I came around the side of the car and opened the door for Freya and took her hand. She blushed and took it. I shut the car door and led her into the school. Tiffany and Missy were also heading inside. Oh my, Freya. Tiffany stopped us. I had no idea that maternity wear could be so fashionable. Freya rolled her eyes. Yeah, you know me, princess. Top of the line designers. She laughed. What was that about? I looked back at Tiffany's shocked face. No idea, Freya shrugged. I guess God forbid I dress like a chick once in a while. I looked her over again. Well, I like it. She punched me in the shoulder. Of course you do, blondie, she chuckled. It makes me look like I have huge knockers. I blushed and tried to ignore her comment. I was about to change the subject when we reached Freya's locker. I froze. There was a wire coat hanger on Freya's locker with a note taped to it. Freya stepped up to her locker and read the note. She was silent. I came up behind her and read the note over her shoulder. Thought this might come in handy. Alex. I turned and headed back upstairs to my class, happy that Freya was in good hands. When I got to class, Gordon was trying to flirt with Denise, but to no avail. When I sat down, Denise giggled. Hi, Alex, she sang. Hi, I mumbled back, taking my notebook out of my backpack. Gordon gave me a side look and I shrugged. Denise continued to give me looks during class, making my face red. I kept my eyes on the board, but I could see Denise's smiling face in my peripheral vision. At the end of class, Denise pretended to trip and drop her notebook. Oh, oops! She giggled, not moving to pick it up. I sighed and grabbed it, thrusting the notebook at her. Here! I avoided her gaze. Denise tossed her hair, accepting the book. Thanks! She muttered, giving me a dark look. I ignored her and headed out the door. For all I know, she could have been one of the girls who put the hanger on Freya's locker. The thought made me sick. I can't even imagine how awful Freya must feel. 
I hope she's okay. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed reading along with me. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.